In this episode, we'll learn how to get the proper contrast preserving maximum details in the shadows and highlights. We will be working with correctly exposed lock footage which offers the maximum dynamic range captured by the camera. The image might look flat and desaturated, but this will give us the foundation and flexibility to adjust it to a well-balanced natural look with minimal detail loss. Considering that you've selected and edited your clips in the timeline, head over to the color page. Let's rename our first node and call it Exposure, since here we'll do all the adjustments regarding luminosity. Click on the Scopes icon to bring up the waveform in the lower right corner. The Scopes window has a variety of graphic analysis representations of the video signal at the current playhead location. The waveform displays the luminance level of your image on a vertical 10-bit scale that starts with 0 being the black level and 1023 being the white level. You can also undock the scopes in a floating window where you can have multiple scopes at the same time. The waveform monitor will give us the best representation of how much contrast we should be dialing in, since it will quickly reveal if we went too far by blowing out the highlights or crushing the shadows and losing detail. The horizontal graph on the waveform correlates the luminance level of the image from left to right. An easy way to understand this is to turn on the display qualifier focus and hover over the image. You will notice the focus circle showing the luminosity level as you move the eyedropper over various parts of the image. Furthermore, this is helpfully represented by the three RGB values corresponding with the eyedropper at the current location when you turn on the RGB channels in the scope settings. This is a quick way to check if your blacks are black or the white values are indeed white by how close together the three circles align on the waveform. But how should we use this information from the waveform? Now that we understand the luminance level, we can adjust the exposure in contrast and get a proper looking broadcast safe image. Broadcast safe is a term referring to a certain target area of luminosity levels that are not exceeding the zero and 1023 lines preserving details in the shadow and highlights. First, let's start by analyzing our image and see if it was properly exposed in camera. If your clip is over or underexposed, you can correct it by using the offset to center or balance the luminosity within the middle of the waveform scope. Next, let's add some contrast using the contrast adjustment while keeping an eye on the shadows and highlight levels in the waveform. Notice how the waveform widens towards the extremes of the vertical graph, effectively adding contrast in our image. The idea is to cover as much dynamic range as possible without blowing out the highlights or crushing the shadows considering that the image was properly exposed in the camera. Obviously night or dominantly darker scenes don't need to be pushed as much. Likewise, bright scenes such as snowy landscapes don't need the white level pushed as high. Now let's use the pivot slider to shift the contrast ratio from the center of the waveform towards the highlights or shadows. This effectively equates to balancing the contrast strength favoring the highlights or the shadows, for example setting the time of day in an outside scene. Double click on the contrast label to reset the values in case you want to start again. If you need to fine tune the black or white levels, head over to the log wheels and adjust the shadow or highlights to the desired level. The log wheels are a more surgical way to adjust certain tonal regions in your video compared to the primary wheels where the adjustments are made with a broader organic stroke. Use the low and high range values to restrict the log adjustments to only a certain luminance range. Now that we've dialed in the proper contrast, let's balance the luminosity using the lift gamma and gain primary wheel controls which corresponds to shadow, midtones and highlights respectively as you might be more familiar from other applications. These are the main three overlapping tonal range controls that work together seamlessly in an organic result. Make sure to use these primary adjustments before any other secondary tools like log wheels or RGB curves as they can be most effective. For instance, if you need to rebalance the midtone luminosity in the skin tone after a contrast adjustment, use the gamma master wheel to adjust it. Use the lift to dial some depth in the shadows or the gain to add brightness. 
Ultimately, use your artistic judgment to bring the video to the look you want while keeping an eye on the scopes and making sure that there is no information loss in the shadows or highlights. In the next episode, we learn how to add the right amount of saturation and tune in a healthy skin tone. Make sure you join and I'll see you next time!